the best night of Mauricio Pochettino's reign so far and very possibly the best night at the Todd Bowley era so far as Chelsea finally break down Newcastle after trailing for nearly the whole game and by hook or by crook make our way into the semi-finals of the League Cup. Right, what's happening people and welcome back to the Joey Knight podcast. If you are new around here, please do me a massive favour at the end of the video. If you like the content and you want to see more from myself, hit the subscribe button. Also, click the bell because then you get a notification every time I drop a video and I need you all to do me a favor right now smash that like button it helps the channel out more than you could imagine I've lost my voice I feel absolutely rough I was at the game last night big shout out to Jet Set Hospitality who sorted me out for the tickets once again every single match in this League Cup so far they've sorted me out with the hospitality tickets so Amir you know what to do if you want us to get to the final if you want the winning run to continue you need to sort me out for the next game once again but going back to yesterday's game these are the sort of nights that I love man growing up at Stamford Bridge the cold Tuesday Wednesday nights are always the bollocks all right they're not Champions League this season or even Europa League but I tell you what a win in the League Cup against Newcastle all feel so so good last night I had shades of Napoli at home when I was there we won 4-1 those sort of nights when the whole of Stamford Bridge is just absolutely buzzing and people can banter and say what because you're through to the semi-finals of the League Cup but ultimately football is about the feeling it gives you and the feeling we got last night after winning that penalty shootout was absolutely ridiculous and one thing you can't deny is this Pochettino side is growing albeit we've had a lot of bumps in the road on our way to get there and there'll be plenty more bumps in the road on our way to get where we need to be we are seeing something we are seeing this side grow together and I'm just so happy about what I'm seeing at the moment but getting into the game here's the lineup that Mauricio Pochettino opted to start the game with obviously we see Enzo Fernandez coming back into the fold after he didn't start against Sheffield United I actually thought in the game he didn't start our midfield looked quite good and although Enzo Fernandez did make it back onto the pitch he was back off the pitch after about half an hour I think now I thought it was a tactical change because when Enzo did come off, um, the shape of our team did change slightly and I actually rated it. However, I've seen after the game that I don't think it was a tactical change. It was due to illness. But either way, I can't hand on heart say we massively missed Enzo when he came off. Now, obviously, the game didn't start too well for us. Around 15 minutes into the match, Callum Wilson pounces on the chance given to him by, I would say, Benoit Badia-Shill. He's the one that really gave him the chance. Thiago Silva had a little bit of fault there. Maybe some people could say but realistically, sloppy defending from Benoit Badia-Shill. And there's no man who is more of a certainty when he goes through on goal, in my opinion, than Callum Wilson. Callum Wilson will convert the chances you gave him. We gave him a chance. He converted it. Nothing Petrovic could do about it. And it was very, very sloppy from Chelsea. And at that point, I thought there's no way we win this game. Because what Newcastle do very well is they manage games very well, in my opinion. And people can look at maybe the PSG match. People could look at the Liverpool game earlier on in the season when Darwin Nunes scored twice late against them and they could argue that but I do think Newcastle are very good at what they do and I think that tactically Newcastle were always going to be the sort of team that if they got in front they'd be very much happy to get 11 men behind the ball part the bus and use that as their opportunity to get through to the semi-finals and obviously in the first half we had a lot of possession we always have a lot of possession don't we but we didn't look that good in my opinion we didn't really create anything clear-cut and the forward line of Palmer Sterling and Jackson through the middle um, wasn't really doing all that much in that first half. Now, in the second half, and I've got to give Poch credit here, he changed something. We came out, we looked a lot better. Obviously, I don't know whether it was after the Enzo sub or at the start of the second half, but Sterling switched over to the other side. Palmer came more central, um, and obviously then Jackson moved out a little bit more wide, and Broha come on, so it must have been the second half. It was around the second half. We looked a lot more potent when that happened, you know. And actually, I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, do you know what, like... All right, we've got wingers, um, albeit, you know, we've got some good ones who've spent some big money on, but Jackson doesn't look bad as a winger, you know? Like, oh, sorry, my voice is absolutely going here. We're soldiering through. We get on with it. Jackson don't look bad as a winger, does he? Like, he's actually not even that bad um, on the wing. Brower, again, didn't really show that much. But we looked massively more potent in front of goal in the second half. We were creating a lot more opportunities. Raheem Sterling being at the fold of a lot of it. And eventually, eventually, Mikhailo Mudrik, Josh Oveste's absolute hero, comes on and saves the day for Chelsea. Now, Josh, I know you're watching, mate. I've got to give the apology because I text Josh when Mudrik came on, having a bit of banter with him, saying, oh, yeah. 
Here comes Mudrick to change the match like he normally does. And I am so happy to be eating humble pie because Mudrick did change the match. Now, listen, I actually put Mudrick in my starting lineup for the game and got a lot of stick in the comments. People saying to me, how could you start Mudrick over Sterling? And I sort of understand it, but I do think that obviously Mudrick does need to be given a run of games for us to really determine where he's at. And a night like last night can only do wonders for Mudrick's confidence. He came on, he did change the game. He looked lively when he came on and he pounced upon the opportunity that Kieran Trippier blessed him with in the 92nd minute, whatever it was, and Chelsea scored. And it was absolute scenes at Stamford Bridge. Mental. i tell you what I do like. I really like this format where we go straight to penalties. And we all know what happened when we went to penalties. We converted every penalty we got. Cole Palmer with a really good finish. Gallagher with a really good finish. Nkunku with a really good finish. And then Mudrick stepping up after Newcastle had missed a penalty. Trippier misses his penalty, puts it wide. Mudrick steps up to put us in the lead and then it all comes down to Chelsea's fifth penalty taker and I don't know who was going to take the fifth um, because if Newcastle score it doesn't matter if we score our fifth we go through but when Matt Ritchie steps up the main man Petrovic oh what a feeling what a feeling Petrovic saves the penalty and Chelsea run to celebrate as we go through to the semi-finals of the league cup what a feeling mate i literally haven't felt a feeling like this at stamford bridge in so long man i'm so happy let's get in to some player ratings for this game let's start off with petrovic in goal i am giving him a nine out of ten and you lot might think that's too generous because he really didn't have anything to do in the match but i don't care i'm giving him a nine out of ten because petrovic when called upon so far has been really really good and Listen, I say all the time, don't I, that sometimes you stumble upon a recipe a recipe, sorry, for success. We have stumbled upon that recipe for success. I don't want to see Robert Sanchez coming back in and displacing Petrovic now. Petrovic has to be the man, right? Petrovic is just as good at shot stopping probably as Robert Sanchez. But I'll tell you what Petrovic has, right? Petrovic has a calmness about him when the ball comes back to him. Now, I've got no doubt that Robert Sanchez probably fancies himself as more of a ball-playing goalkeeper than Petrovic does. But sometimes it's not about what you fancy yourself as, it's what you do. And when Petrovic is in between the sticks, I feel a calmness there. I don't feel the tension when the ball comes back there. And let's be honest, a couple of times he made good saves. He stepped up to save the penalty. Um, and straight away, I feel like he's become a bit of a fan favourite there. You lot let me know what you think. Would you have Robert Sanchez back in there or would you stick with Petrovic? I definitely would. De Sassi at right back, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10. Let me give you a bit of context, right? If I give you a 5 out of 10, you've pretty much had a bang average game. Doesn't mean I don't love you, but you've had a bang average game. If I give you a 6, you've been alright. You've been decent enough. If I give you a 7, you've had a good game. If I give you an 8, you've had a really good game. And if I give you a 9, you're a hero. So Petrovic got a 9. De Sassi's getting a 7. Um, decent enough. Decent enough. He was actually breaking down a wing from that right back position quite a few times. But... It does sort of go to show how much we miss Reese James because the Sassy just ain't got that sort of delivery that Reese James has got. Um, but he was decent. The Sassy was all right. I think he's doing well at right back, man. Um, do we go in for another right back? Obviously, we've got Melagusto. We actually saw Melagusto come on and play at left back after Levi Colwell come off. So that's a question there. I don't think we do go in for another right back, but you would want a right back to have a little bit more attacking threat than the Sassy does. You'd either want your right back or your left back to have that attacking threat. So Maybe when we go forward, we drop into a three and one of the fullbacks bombs on. We've got Chile coming back, but he, he struggles to stay fit. Um, but yeah, we've got Chile coming back, so that could change things. Let's move on to Thiago Silva. Now, I said that Thiago Silva could have been a little bit at fault for the goal. It wasn't Thiago Silva's mistake, um, but maybe he could have done better. But I'll tell you what, Thiago Silva, I've spoke a few times about not wanting him out the lineup, but feeling that maybe Thiago Silva should come out the lineup from time to time. Last night he was in the lineup and Pochettino was right. Thiago Silva gets an 8 out of 10. The man is class. That was probably, I'd say it's probably the best performance from Thiago Silva I've seen in the Chelsea shirt this season. His tackle timing was immense. He got everything right, in my opinion, when going into the challenge. Saved us a few times when Newcastle were looking to break on us. And Thiago Silva was 
probably a cut above anyone we had in defence last night. I love Thiago Silva, man. And and if we see Thiago Silva, um, maybe not starting every game this season, but coming in and out, I think that he's the only player that I'd probably say in our lineup can do that and it won't hinder him all that much. And I think that the boys can learn so much off his experience and what he does. Love Thiago Silva. I was buzzing to see him put in such good performance last night. Benoit, Baddy Ashil, you're getting a 5 out of 10. I like Baddy Ashil as well. I think he's cool, calm, collective, composed on the ball. And sometimes those traits can lead to you being a little bit sloppy because you're too cool. you got ice running through your veins, but ultimately sometimes you need a little bit of fire in there to keep you sharp. And I do think that Benoit Baddy Ashil is very unlucky that I'm giving him a 5 because his performance weren't bad at all. It was just that one individual mistake. But I can't really give you a 6 because of that. But don't worry, Baddy Ashil, I'd still have you in the starting lineup for the next match. We love you. Levi Colwell, obviously he came off, didn't he? What, half time, something like that? I'll give him a six. He wasn't bang average. He was a little bit better than bang average. Um, he was decent enough. Decent enough. Got forward a few times quite nicely. Caicedo. He, again, you could say, was he at fault for the goal a little bit? Um, it was a missed time ball back to him. He did stretch out for it. Didn't get to it. I'd give him a 7 out of 10. I thought Caicedo was good. He was uh, he was lucky to be on the pitch, though, wasn't he? Like, you remember, like, back in the day, they used to say, uh, when the game kicks off, the first one's free. And last night, without VAR, um, which I'm grateful for. I love the games without VAR. VAR, shit. Um, I'm very grateful we didn't have it because Caicedo might have found himself being sent off, you know. But... First one's free. First one's on the house. Don't worry about that. Caicedo gets a 7 out of 10. Solid performance from Caicedo. Connor Gallagher. Bowley, if you're watching this, do not sell Conor Gallagher. You will feel the wrath of the fans. We don't want him gone. You won't be able to reinvest the money better. Conor Gallagher is the absolute daddy. This boy is the man. He gets an 8 out of 10 on last night's performance for me. He kept the midfield ticking over nicely. He just looks like our most mature, most composed player in that midfield. And do you know what? We've got a couple of hundred million pound signings and Conor Gallagher's the best out of the three in midfield. Do not sell him. Honestly, that will be an indictment upon our club. It will be so bad if we sell Conor Gallagher because Mauricio Pochettino has time in, time out, show you not only with his words but also with his actions that Gallagher's his man. Gallagher's our captain when Rhys James isn't there and he's a deserving one. If you sell Conor Gallagher, honestly, you will lose the support of the fan base, right? You might call us ungrateful. You might think that we're spoiled being that you're throwing money about and spending money left, right and centre and then one of our academy players goes and um, we lose our nut over it, but we're not. You've moved on. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, sweet. All right, okay, I love Loftus-Cheek, but you moved him on, you didn't feel the wrath of the fans. You moved Mason Mount on, you didn't feel the wrath of the fans. It was fine, it's all good. But I tell you what, if you move Conor Gallagher on, honestly, the fans are going to be bowly out and I'm not going over the top there. Don't move Conor Gallagher on. He's the man. He performed well for us last night. Eight out of 10. Enzo, he came off early, didn't he? <clears throat> I lost my voice shouting big time last night, man. Enzo came off early. I give him a five out of 10. Average, bang average, but nothing wrong with being bang average, but bang average. He was ill, um, not too sure whether he'll be all right for obviously Sunday's game against Wolves. Let's see how it goes. Cole Palmer, I want to give him, I want to do I want to give him a seven or I want to give him a six? I want to give him a seven. I know I want to give him a seven, but I might have to give him a six, you know. Didn't do anything magical, um, but that's I'm always rating someone on their standards because was Cole Palmer one of the best players on the pitch? Yeah. Do I now understand that Cole Palmer is is probably one of, if not our best player? Yeah. So I am sort of look at it and I'm like, well, did he do anything magical? No. Maybe for that reason, do I have to give him a six? No. I gave Caicedo a seven. He's getting a seven. Cole Palmer, you're getting a seven. Nicholas Jackson, you're going to have to get a five, my friend. Um, bang average. But I tell you what, when you moved over to the wing, you looked a little bit better. Um, interesting to see if him and Broha can form some sort of partnership. But when I touch on a man that I'm going to in a minute, I don't really want to see him or Broha on the pitch at the moment because we have got a new star boy coming our way. But... Nicholas Jackson, I give him about a 5 out of 10, didn't do all that much, didn't do badly, Raheem Sterling, same as Cole Palmer, 7 out of 10, but I actually thought Raheem Sterling maybe did a little bit more for this match than Cole Palmer did, Raheem Sterling is always there in the big moments, isn't he, whenever something pivotal happens, whenever something important happens, Raheem Sterling will usually be playing a part in that moment, um, the fact he's so good and he's always there in so many moments means that for every one thing he does do well, there's probably going to be maybe one thing he doesn't do so well, and that's why some fans, like, I hurt him 
murmurs in the stadium sometimes. Oh, get him off about Sterling. I just don't understand it. Sterling is very clearly a class above a lot of what is around him. Not every player what is around him, but a lot of what is around him. Raheem Sterling's the man. Second season for Chelsea. I really think he's coming good and I'm really impressed by his performances. Not every player can give you a 9 out of 10 week in, week out, but Sterling's doing well. Let's talk about the game changer. The man that came on, Mikhailo Mudrik. Mudrik is semi starting to find his feet. It's a little bit concerning that Pochettino doesn't see him as a first team starter. But then when you look at Raheem Sterling, his contribution towards the team, when you look at Cole Palmer and what he's done since being brought in, how can you really justify Mudrik being a starter? I don't know if you can. Um, but if you can come off the bench and be a game changer for us like he was last night, I'm more than happy to see him do that as much as as much as possible. I do think there's like uh, people hammered me in the comments last time for saying that that Mudrik could be brilliant. There is there's glimpses of brilliance. Not last night he pounced on an opportunity and did what he needed to do and scored his penalty. That was good. Um, but in other games gone by, there are glimpses of brilliance from Mudrik. I just think we need to see it um, a little bit more. And when he makes comments like "You're only seeing twenty percent of me," that don't help either. As Brian, my friend, said, "If we're only seeing twenty percent, let's only pay you twenty percent of the wages." Um, anyway, he's not paying them. He's a Newcastle fan. Christopher Nkunku. Do you remember player cam? That thing that we used to have on the old Sky back in the day. I pretty much player cammed Nkunku from when he came on, and I honestly think he looks so silky, so smooth. He looks class. Perfect way to pass, um, really zipped it, good first touch at times, nearly scored, didn't he? Obviously, Raheem Sterling overcooked a pass to him and, you know, it could have gone better for him there. Converted the penalty really, really well. Um, he did look like he was he was just in second gear when he came on and he was probably right to do so. There's no point busting a gut when you just come back from injury um, and you've still got fresher legs than everyone on the pitch because he was brought on right towards the end. But he actually looked really potent for us, really, really good for us. He sort of floated about that front line, like at one point I was like, like, is he centre attacking mid? Is he the number nine? Is he moved to the wing? He was sort of interchanging. And I do think, I've said it before, haven't I? This sort of interchanging front line is something that um, we could do really well with going forward. So, I, I, do you know what? I don't want to get gassed up on one performance. But on last night's show, I think Nkunku is going to be a big, big player for us. I'd love to see him start against Wolves. Is that too soon? Am I really rushing him back to think that he could do that? I don't think he will. He only got, what... 10, 15 minutes or something last night. I can't remember. I'd had a few beers. Um, but yeah, don't know. I, I, if he gets 45 minutes of football against Wolves, um, it makes us a lot more of a, a dangerous team going into that Wolves match. What next for Chelsea now we've got that win? I mean, as I say, Sunday against Wolves, it's, it's at Molyneux. It's a match that I was supposed to be at, but when they moved the fixture to... Uh, Christmas Eve, I just can't do it, man. I've got so much I need to be doing and getting on with. And a lot of people will look at Wolves and go, right, well, they're 13th in the table. They've won one in five. It should be a win. But I tell you what, right, there's not many more deceiving positions in the Premier League table this season than Wolves is because Wolves have been on the end of bad, bad VAR decisions at time this season. And they're a decent team, Wolves. I said at the start of the season that I thought they could be a dark horse for relegation. I don't think that at all now. Wolves are decent. Gary O'Neill's a very, very good manager. And when you look at the teams that have gone to Molyneux and failed to beat them this season, most notably in Man City, in Spurs, in Aston Villa and in Newcastle, you've got to realise that it's going to be a real, real tough match. It's going to be a real, real tough assignment for Mauricio Pochettino to get his men um, a win against Wolves. But I do think that we can do it. And do you know what? If we do beat Wolves, it'll be three wins out of three and I'll be back on this Chelsea hype train. If we beat Wolves, I think that we're within a shout of qualifying for Europa League football come the end of the season. Again, it will be a character building match. I think it'll be season defining if we beat Wolves because we've got to always sort of dial back to where we're at at this moment in time. Where we're at at this moment in time is we win some, we lose some, we have good nights, we have bad nights. But if we go three wins on the bounce, we beat Wolves. And obviously in that space of time called Sheffield United, we should beat them. They're bottom of the table. But then to knock Newcastle out of a cup that would have meant so much to them. They got to the final last season. They've been dumped out of the Champions League. And this is probably, barring the FA Cup, their last real chance at doing so brilliant this season, having real, real success. So to knock them out is big. It's a big achievement. And we were the better team throughout the whole match. We did deserve to win in the end. But if we then go and beat Wolves away 
especially considering we lost there last season, didn't we? What was that, 2-0? Um, if we do it, I'll be absolutely buzzing. Absolutely buzzing. I'll be back on the Chelsea hype train. But what about the League Cup specifically? Well, I genuinely think we can go on and win this now. We've got Liverpool against West Ham tonight. If West Ham win that, then you've got to think, well, West Ham beat us this season. They've not Liverpool out of the cup. They're going to be good. Um, so whoever we play out of them two will be a real, real hard match. I hope we don't meet whoever it is until the final. And going on the finals uh, towards the end of Tuchel's days, those two finals against Liverpool, both being stalemates as well. I hope it ain't Liverpool. I really hope it ain't. If... I could get my dream pick for who I would face off with in the next round. Obviously, you're going to lean towards Borough. You're going to want Borough. But Fulham, I wouldn't turn them down either. Um, yeah, hopefully we avoid Liverpool and West Ham and meet them in the final. But... I don't know, man. I genuinely do think that this will be such a massive character building experience for these young players, for this team, if we can get to that, Wem uh, that Wembley final and win it. Even if we just get to Wembley, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but even if we just get there, brilliant. Another away day for us fans. Um, it's a match I'll definitely be at by hook or by crook. Hopefully, Amir from Jet Set Hospitality suits me out for that one. But yeah, we're getting so many good moments from this Chelsea team this season. We're inconsistent. I completely get that. And we're not in a position where we can be shouting, saying, OK, yeah, Champions League push, and we're definitely going to win this cup and whatnot, although we will definitely win this cup. But we're getting such good moments. Like, last season, please tell me in the comments, where were the moments? Where were the good moments last season? I'm not on about, you know, an individual win 2-1 against Leicester at home or something. I'm on about real, real good, memorable moments at Stamford Bridge. The only one you can really name me um, is the 2-0 the win against Dortmund in the second leg. But apart from that, they were so far and few between. Whereas this season already, we've had, albeit in draws, the Man City and the Arsenal game, yeah? And obviously the draw against Liverpool, that was pretty good as well. We had the Tottenham win, you know? We're having really good moments so far this season and they're, they're clustered in the middle of bad moments as well and it's up and down. But eventually, when it sort of tails out... Pochettino is doing really good things with this side. Again, another match where Pochettino makes changes at halftime and after halftime we get better and that is the sign of a good manager, being able to change stuff at halftime and get better because early on the season we weren't really doing that. So I've got a lot of love, Pochettino. I've got a lot of love for these boys. I... I'm very happy to be a Chelsea fan this morning. And uh, at least now we go into Christmas. Look, we've got to beat Wolves. But at least now we go into Christmas, for the most part, of a really good feeling around Chelsea. Are we where we want to be? Are we where we expect it to be? No, we're not. But if you're only here for the destination, and I'll just have to wake you up when we get there, I am here for the journey, and I'm enjoying this journey with this Chelsea side. People, thank you all for making it to the end of another video. Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And also, I have now launched... Joey Knight Boxing, the my second channel, my boxing channel, where I'm covering all things boxing. I know a lot of you guys are into your boxing, so if you are, please, please head over there. It's linked in the description. Subscribe. I'm going to try and drop a video from there today. If not, it will be tomorrow. We're obviously going to preview the uh, the Anthony Joshua against Otto Varlin fight, Deontay Wilder against Joseph Parker and that whole card. Got a video on Chris Eubank against Conor Ben, the, the sort of fallout of that coming soon. Both videos with my friend Brian, the true Geordie. So please, if you're into your boxing, head over there and make sure... You are there for that. Guys, I'll see you all in the next one.